A Boy at War, Chapter 3. Daddy's here, Bee screamed. They were all in the garden. His mother was wearing a silk dress, a pink flower in her hair. His father was stretched out on a lawn chair in his dress whites, with a high collar and the single row of neat, shiny buttons. He'd taken off his shoes and socks. Hey, Dad, Adam said, and he saluted, because he knew his father liked that. Uh, your hair, his father said. Oh, sorry, sir. Adam brushed his hair quickly to one side. In a second, it was going to fall back the way it always did. His father's hair was blonde and wavy and stayed put. Adam's was dark and it flopped all over the place. He never thought about how it looked except around his father. When his father was home, everything Adam did was with him in mind. It wasn't that his father demanded things or gave a lot of orders. It was just that he was there and that changed everything. Ten days and look at him, his father said approvingly to Adam's mother. His father wasn't big, but he had a big presence and a big voice, too. What have you been feeding him, Marilyn? Oh, I hadn't noticed, but you're right. He is taller, isn't he? Wiggle them, Daddy. B was leaning over their father's knee, examining his bare toes. Say the five little sailors. It was a story his father told. Well, the big boy toe is rip, his father said. Then comes lip. B touched each toe as he named him. Then chip, then hip, and little bitty bip, B said. Now tell the girls toes. Five little tarts. Susie's the biggest. Then comes doozy, then choosy, then bluesy, then B, me, she said loudly. Then they get married. Say that part, Daddy, and say it fast. Rip to Susie, lip to doozy, chip to choosy, hip to bluesy, and bip to me, B yelled. They all laughed. Adam's mother went into the kitchen to make a pitcher of lemonade. Well, how's school? His father asked. It's okay. Making friends? Oh, sure. Civilian schools are different, aren't they? It's not that bad, Adam said. His father picked up B and marched around with her. What if I walked around my ship this way, Bumblebee, and my bare feet? What do you think my men would say? No bare feet in the Navy, Daddy. That's against the rules. Hey, Dad, can I have the keys to the car? Adam said. His father was in such a good mood. What for? To practice my driving. Since when did you take the car? Just around the house, Adam said. There was never any traffic up here. His mother had let him practice a few times while his father was away. Listen, you don't drive alone till you get your license. I don't go anywhere, Adam said. Honestly, Dad, just up and down the street, around the house. I stay real close. Don't even think of it, his father said. But a moment later, he was in a really good mood. He reversed himself. Okay, get the car keys and let's see what you can do. Adam got behind the wheel and his father took the passenger seat. Always put the car in neutral, his father said. Adam nodded and turned the key. The needles moved on the gauge, the gas, the heater, the oil, and the ammeter, which showed the electric charge. He pulled out the choke. You don't need to do that. I thought we just drove in, so the engine is still hot. He pushed the choke in. Oh, right. He knew it. Why hadn't he remembered that you only choked a cold engine? He didn't drive well. He'd done a lot better other times. He either let the clutch out too fast or didn't feed enough gas. The car bucked. Oh, right, I'm cowboy, his father said. He was still cheerful, but Adam was a mess. He stalled a couple of times, and then he backed into their neighbor's hibiscus hedge. Stop, his father ordered. Whoa, hold it. Adam got the car back on the driveway. His father didn't say anything else, but Adam was done. He didn't want to practice anymore. Good, his father said, taking the keys. You got the idea. A little more practice on the fine points and you'll be okay. Thanks, Dad. Adam went to his room and flopped down on the bed. He felt exhausted.